What do you want from me? I'm just blood and flesh and bones I'm not an answer Welcome to Mildly Entertaining at UNCW, the show where the Office of Military Affairs keeps you mildly entertained and more or less up to date on what's going on at UNCW. Your hosts are Joanna DeMott, the Military Liaison and Program Coordinator, and Melanie Nelson, the Military Student Services Specialist. Greetings, Joanna. How are you today? I'm great. I'm always great. Uh, it's, a, it's a great day. How are you today, Melanie? I'm likewise great. Had a good meeting, a, a virtual meeting with an organization that I am a part of, uh, and it was lots of fun watching the people in that organization figure out Zoom for the first time. So, you know, I'm sort of like, I'm a Zoom expert, and uh, I just, I didn't help them. I just sort of sat there and smirked in the background while they tried to figure out how to share their screens effectively. It was, it was, it was something. Um, so that, that gave me my jollies for the day. I am obviously a horrible, judgmental, unhelpful person, and I'm okay with that at the moment. Uh, so what's been going on with you, Joanna? Well, you know, I was just sitting here chatting with our guest today, Niall McKibben, a University College Academic Advisor and retired Marine. How are you today, Niall? I'm doing well. Thank you, Joanna. Excellent. So I see you are in an office now, but how has your work situation changed? Are you in the office all the time? Is this kind of a hybrid thing? What's going on? Yeah, it is kind of a hybrid. You know, when COVID first started, basically everybody was mandated to working from home. And so, yeah, I had my little office space at my at my house, my kitchen table, if you can imagine that. And uh, my wife wasn't quite so happy. My wife is at home as well. So it's like we're seeing each other and just kind of going through that tribulation, that type of stuff as well. But uh, since the fall semester did restart, um, I'm on campus now twice a week. Uh, and so we still have that face-to-face -face with our making ourselves available for to helping our students. Excellent. Uh, are you seeing a lot of students nowadays? Um, really not. I mean, most of the stuff we're doing is in the virtual world. So we're doing a lot of Skype meetings with all of our students and the brand new incoming freshmen, et cetera, transfer students. Um, and we're trying to keep the social distance portion up. Uh, if a student does need to come and see us, though, we do have a separate office space where we can keep our social distance, but we can still meet with students if we need to. That's excellent. It's always important that you have that opportunity to do that face-to-face. -face. I know it's been such a weird six months that we've been in. Yes. I'm gonna turn you over to Melanie awkwardly because that's how we do transitions here. And she has <laughs> some extra questions for you. Sure, how can I help Melanie? Uh, I'm sure you will be able to help uh, because this is a very personal question. So you should absolutely know the answer. I'm just kidding. You're going to know the answers to everything we asked today. But the first question is, what are you snacking on these days? So you're in this hybrid environment. Does that mean your snacking habits are hybrid? Do you have different habits for different offices? Do you have different snack stashes in different offices? I want to know. I do, actually, um, but I'm kind of on a health kick right now. So, you know, I've been trying to eat more healthy because when COVID started and, you know, four months later, I weighed myself and I'd gained 10 pounds. And I was like, oh, my goodness, what the heck am I doing? Because my pantry is right next to my, my office at home, right, the kitchen table. And it uh, um, was not conducive. So I'm trying to do a little bit more healthy eating. I recently had started um, the Atkins diet as well, too. So trying to do everything kind of minimum carbs and that type of stuff. And it really works. And I'm really happy about it. It was a little hard to first start it, to have to cut out all my carbs. So no more French fries, no more pizza, no more of, the, of those good things. But, um, you know, they, they still make a lot of stuff that is carb free out there and that I can still enjoy. So I still get my little chocolate bar every evening, my, my little self treat. Very nice. Yeah, so I did brave Dunkin' Donuts this morning. Um, there was a coffee emergency at my house, as in we ran out. So uh, we are located next to basically just, just a very, very brief, too brief of a walk across the road to get to Dunkin' Donuts on campus. And I went in and it was empty. And um, so I was getting my coffee and I was just staring at all the donuts. And I was like, it actually makes me kind of sad that there are so many donuts being prepped that are never going to be eaten because we just don't have the traffic on campus to generate you know, not enough people are going and buying donuts there. So I'm sad about those donuts, uh, but I'm glad to hear that you were able to persevere through your sadness about losing carbs. And I'm also happy to hear that you have chocolate every day. 
that's a good thing that I recommend to everybody. Um, so that's wonderful. Isn't it interesting though, how we're sort of experiencing the freshman 15 that like otherwise wouldn't exist. I realize that's probably like a pejorative term that we're not supposed to use anymore. We're not supposed to body shame people. I'm not shaming you, I think you look great today, but it is interesting that we're sort of having to like back to school ourselves on our, our diets right now. Yeah, that was the same first thought that I had. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm doing the freshman 15, <laughs> as you said, but you're right, we shouldn't body shame, but at the same time, we all understand where that term comes from and what it means and everything else as well, so. We just gotta look at ourselves feet away from the Dunkin' Donuts on campus. <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky at home, I, I live in a small town, I live up in Sneeds Ferry area, we don't have those in my town. So for me to go to a Dunkin' Donuts, it's a 30 minute drive and it's not worth it. So I could talk myself out of it. That's good. There are other delights in the Sneeds Ferry region. I lived there myself briefly at one point. There's a place called Emmer Wings, um, which literally it's E-M-R apostrophe wings. And it's been there for quite, it's quite the establishment, but they have all sorts of fried delights, which I should probably not tell you about because you're on. On Atkins. Anyway, now, now things have gotten really awkward, Melanie, so I'm just going to move along. We want to talk to you a little bit about your career path um, and how you wound up being an academic advisor at UNCW. So we know that you have military service in your background, but we also know that you have college in your background. And can you tell us a little bit about how those two dovetailed and got you to where you are? Yeah, it was kind of an interesting story. Um, I retired in 2005. And in about 2003, about two years before I knew I was getting ready to retire, I decided, you know, I need to probably finish my undergraduate degree at some particular point. And since I have tuition assistance and all these other resources, how am I going to do this and get it done? Um, I had, I think at the time, uh, like 45 credits I had taken while on active duty, attending various colleges at my various duty stations and whatnot. And... Uh, but I decided I would buckle down. So I volunteered to go on an un unaccompanied tour overseas. So I was in Okinawa, Japan, and I volunteered to go there so I could focus on my studies. And um, in that two year period, I completed all of my graduation requirements to be able to get my undergraduate degree. Um, a matter of fact, my retirement date was November 1st, and I graduated from my university on December 12th. So it was like, perfect. So I accomplished that goal, and it was setting that goal, and having to do a little bit of self-sacrifice, and my wife and my children kind of had to endure that at the same particular time. Um, but how I got into higher education, so anyway, after, after that, I decided I can use my GI Bill, and so I used my GI Bill to complete everything for my master's program. So I didn't have to touch it while my, doing my undergraduate study. But one of the last things, or one of the, the last jobs that I had while in the Marine Corps was, I was a military recruiter. And so that introduced me to working with high school students and, and alike and having those conversations with those students about life after high school, whether that being going directly into the workforce, going to college or going into the military. And so I had those conversations on a daily basis with those students. And so the opportunity came when I retired was there was a college admissions position that had opened up at a local college. And so I decided that I would apply where I could utilize those recruiting skills directly in that particular job. Um, and so that's the way I did it. That's the way I started in higher education. And here I am 15 years later, having changed and gone and worked with three or four different colleges in my career. Um, but I needed to do something, a little bit of a change. So I had worked in admissions for, you know, 13, 14 years and I needed to do some type of a change. I wanted to do something different. And so academic advising became available and that's where I found my new niche. And I just love helping out new students get assimilated to campus and understand all those nuances about uh, you know, how to develop schedules and put together their academic plans and help them through graduation. What I'm loving about your story um, is number one that you talked about like deciding to prioritize your education, right? And so you were like, you took it, you went real hardcore and you were like, if I take this job in another country, I will suddenly be unavailable to all the things that distract me from getting my work done while I'm at home. And then I'll be able to do this. And then look, you were able to use your entire GI Bill and, and apply that to your graduate studies. I mean, what a great use of resources, number one. And number two, I like that you talk about how 
the way you launched yourself into higher ed to begin with was totally by relying on your military experience, right? Yeah. Like the degree kind of gets your resume in the door. And then when you're in the interview, you talk about how you were a recruiter and all the things you said about starting to interact with people about what's your next path. There are three major options available to you. Which one are you going to choose and what's the best for you? And I love how that relates directly to admissions. Admissions isn't just about recruiting. It's about helping people get get everything done that they need to to get into the university and then to, to connect them into university college. So what a natural bridge for you to go from admissions into advising. I think that is such a cool story. Yeah, and you know, I really enjoy it because I have that military side. When I worked in the admissions, I worked with a lot of transfer students that come from the military. And so I'm able to articulate with them and help them and guide them through there and kind of help that transition because, you know, it is a different communication skill that we've got to have going from the civilian or from the military world to the civilian world and helping them to articulate their skills and, um, you know, how the transfer would look and help them to basically assimilate into the civilian life. And especially with you coming from such a such a non-traditional background in terms of education, how many schools do you think, uh, how many different transcripts did you have by the end of your undergraduate degree? For my undergraduate, I had five different colleges that I had attended, plus then the university that I actually graduated, so six in a sense. Six universities altogether contributed to your, your, the first piece of your higher ed yeah. career, as it were. And that's pretty cool because we do have a lot of students who are sort of like, Ugh, I, can't, like I can't finish my degree at this other school or they don't have the online option that I needed to get. And like, they sort of get bogged down in this idea that like, I can't get it done because I didn't get it done at this one school or I've already transferred two times and I can't face transferring one more time, right? And then, I mean, six different schools all added up to one degree. It really did, you know, and, and I had to juggle, you know, a lot of different things trying to get that degree. You know, I got deployed while I was overseas. I still got deployed and I'm still trying, how am I going to continue to work in my classes and how am I going to be able to log on and do all of that kind of stuff? You know, so my best friends worked in comm who had the, the satellite connection, you know, so I was like, please, I just need to, I need internet. I have to post to my class. I have to turn in my assignment. Uh, and it was, you know, a lot of good time management and making sure that, you know, I did, like you said, made it a priority that this is something that I wanted to be able to complete and need to have done um, to work in the area that I want to work in when I get, when I finish my career. It's always good to have a buddy in the comms department. We have a very close friend of the Office of Military Affairs in the Technology Assistance Center at UNCW. I'm not saying we call in favors, but sometimes we call in favors. Um, so it's always helpful to have that person in comms, but it, how nice that your friend was able to, to help you prioritize too. Like it's, it takes a village to get us through our college degrees is I think what, is what we're hearing here. It does, absolutely. Yeah. Well, again, I'm really glad that you are positioned within University College now. I'm um, looking forward to the, the time when you're able to join the uh, uni program and, and teach, whether it's freshmen or transfer students, I think they really need your expertise. And I know that it's something you're interested in. So I'm excited to have you join that crew uh, and, and be able to wield your considerable influence and, and knuckle down and get some of these people to do better time management. I may need you to come into my class as a guest lecturer to talk about time management. They didn't take very well to my, my lesson on it the other day. So I might be recruiting you as a resource in the very near future. Absolutely. In the meantime, wonderful, glad to hear it. In the meantime, I'm gonna hand you back over to Joanna for some more questions. Sounds great. We were in Okinawa at the same time. Yeah, 2004 or yeah. five? We left in June of 04. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. So it was about the same time I was getting, well, I got there, yeah, pretty close about the same time, May of 2000. Yeah, we were. Excellent. So, so weird how you we were on the freedom <laughs> flight when I was on the prison flight. Yeah. <laughs> Which school did you graduate from there? Uh, I actually graduated from University of Maryland, University College. Or, Me too. Yeah, University. Yeah. We are, we are a, <laughs> alum of the same now global campus. But yes, that's interesting. So two people this week. I've not met one person on campus. And now we've interviewed two people this week who are um, UMGC grads and did it overseas, which is pretty interesting. Um, I love your story and I, I like what it represents for our population too. And for when I talk to prospective students up in Jacksonville, like, it's okay if you have five transcripts. We all, we all did it. We, we did this and we finished up at whichever school we finished up at. And 
we have at U and UNCW, we know this and we help you to, you know, to get there. And we want to make sure that you do that. And it is wonderful to have you in university college so you can share that story of all the schools that you went to. What is the, your favorite part of what you do right now? Um, I, it has to be the interaction with the students. You know, it's my, my two favorite days on the campus is convocation and graduation. You know, it's the two celebratory um, events that we do on the campus to celebrate our brand new students coming in and helping them begin this journey. And then graduation, the culmination of having them completed that particular journey at the same time. But as a university college academic advisor, I have a lot of interaction with students kind of in between all those different phases, um, predominantly early in their educational careers before they've gotten into their major. So helping them kind of figure it out um, about what they want to do. And I tell my students all the time that come in with an undecided major that it's okay to be undecided. This is where they can learn and, um, you know, they're, they're going to make lifelong friends at, here at the university and they're going to be working in careers that you've never even thought about or even had any, um, you know, um, any type of affiliation with through family or friends or other things that are out there. And it just, it kind of puts them at ease. I, you know, a lot of them come in like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And they come and they're so worried. And it's like, just a, a couple of sentences letting you know it's okay to be undecided at this particular point. You have time to figure it out. But then also referring them and giving them the resources of how they, they can figure it out. I'm not going to figure it out. They're going to figure it out. And providing those resources, whether it's through the Career Center or, you know, we've got upcoming a majors fair that's coming up as well here in mid-September. So, you know, having those opportunities to kind of work through those and, and those situations um, to kind of reassure them that it's okay. You don't have to have it all figured out on day one. That is important. And I think that there may be family pressures too when maybe you have a first time college student or first generation college student where the families are assuming they're gonna know exactly what their path is gonna look like and what they're going to do. It's wonderful to have that support from university college that tells them it's okay to be undecided. I give, you know, the other side of the story is, you know, I had a conversation with a student just the other day about everybody in their family works in healthcare. So I guess I have to work in healthcare. And I said, no, you don't. What is your passion? What is your dream? What do you want to be able to do? And giving them permission to be an individual, I think, in that particular sense, I think was important for that student to hear as well. Absolutely. What do you think are some misconceptions about what you do? Uh, I think think some of the misconceptions is, is I do everything for the student, uh, that I'm there to build their schedules, create their classes, pick out what they want to be able to do when that's not the case at all. We empower the students to be in control of their own course selection, classes that they're going to be choosing, sequence, the order that they take their classes, how many credits that they're going to be enrolled in. You know, we guide them, yes, that's true. We will help guide them and point them to make sure that they understand the requirements that they're gonna need for that specific major in graduation. But I think that you know, turning that ownership onto them and making sure that they understand that they're responsible, they themselves, for what their actions are and their, and their planning as well. Um, but we're here for everything. Uh, you know, I get all kinds of weird questions and all kinds of different scenarios, you know, about my roommate, about, uh, you know, what my professor is doing, which is great. I, I, and I want to be able to provide them with those resources. So we become that kind of that one-stop shop for them that kind of help them along that academic path while they're here at UNCW. I love it. It's okay to, to forge your own path. That's, that's awesome. Uh, let's see. You and I live not too far away. I'm in Surf City, so we're, we're not too far away from one another. Do you have something that you like to do outside or something you consider a passion? Uh, family, I think, is kind of my passion. Um, my daughter lives in the area as well. Uh, she works up on Camp Lejeune at the Naval Hospital, so she's a, a NICU nurse, so she spends a lot of time up there working with little tiny babies. Uh, but um, I have two grandsons. That, uh, that she was happy to give me uh, to be able to you know, work with and, and be able to guide as well. They're young, they're six and three. 
Um, I have four total grandsons. I'm still waiting for a granddaughter someday. Hopefully, maybe my wife keeps thinking we'll get a granddaughter, but uh, no pressure, kids. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's we, uh, we spend time out at the beach. We uh, just love, you know, being outdoors and that type of stuff, but spending good quality family time. And it kind of makes up for some of the days I had in my military days when I was deployed or gone um, and enjoying just being there for them. I love that. Uh, yes, after you retire and you've spent all that time and then especially going and doing a, you know, a, a geo batch assignment and being away from the family that now you're able to kind of circle that back and spend so much time is, uh, is really, really awesome. That sacrifice is, is now paid off for, for your family and yourself. That's awesome. Um, is there anything you'd like our listeners to know? We did talk a little bit about the majors and minors fair yesterday with uh, Maria. Okay. Uh, is there anything, anything else that you, you would like our listeners to know about? Uh, just to let them know that right now, I mean, there's a lot of turmoil and things that are happening related to COVID. Um, there are resources that are here, uh, whether it be your academic advisor or through the counseling center or through the, you know, the various other resources that we have on campus. Uh, you're not alone uh, in your feelings as far as this goes. You know, some people are very tepid and very, you know, very anxious about what's going on in the campus. Um, and so just let them know that they're not alone. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of friends and everything that suffer from, you know, things like PTSD and things like that. And just letting them know that there are plenty of people to be able to have those discussions with and those conversations with, and that you don't have to be alone. Um, and, you know, my phone is always open, especially to a vet. We, we love that. And we know that if a student is working with you, that they are well taken care of. And that's, that's huge for, for us to, to say for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank you so much for coming on with us today. It's been a pleasure. It's, I haven't met you in person, so this is, uh, this is nice. Yeah, we keep passing each other, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you're passing each other over an ocean or just up and down Highway 17, who knows? But it, yeah, it, it, is, it, it is really nice to be able to do virtual meetings and we can at least see each other's faces. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, I just want to reiterate, we are really happy to have you in University College. When we do our green zone trainings for faculty and staff where we talk about what it's like to be in the military and what it's like to come from the military environment into the college environment, um, part of what we're promoting is the idea that the green zone isn't just the Office of Military Affairs, right? It's not just the Military Resource Lounge or um, our website or anything like that. It's, it's everywhere on campus. It's this virtual reality and it's also kind of a spiritual reality, if you will, where everybody is committed to supporting and to, to supporting military connected people and to inclusivity in general. And part of that is having staff members scattered throughout campus and all different offices who have similar experiences. So like you said, you're available and it doesn't matter whether they're one of your officially assigned advisees for university college or not, you have the experience to be able to talk to our students about what they're dealing with. Yeah. And uh, we're just really happy to have you there. Well, thank you, yep. Open door policy, anytime. Absolutely. So thanks again for coming on the show today. And this has been an episode of Mildly Entertaining at UNCW and we will see you on the internet. Thank you for listening to Mildly Entertaining. Our intro music comes from the band Blue Turnip and their song, What Do You Want From Me? You can find their EP, Songs from the Root Cellar, on Bandcamp, iTunes, Amazon, and Spotify. For more information, you can go to blueturnipmusic.com.